Today, we got Seiko's least known diver, but in my opinion, their best diver, spiritual successor to the 62 MAS Father of the Willard, the 6105 Slim Case, based on the 8000, and I nicknamed it the 8KX for 8000 and the X for the Pro Specs dial. And you know what? This watch, I believe, has the potential to become just as popular as the SKX. It's almost like a new aged SKX in its look. It's got a simple, graceful, clean look that's beautiful. We got the Tuno or barrel shaped case. It's got a gorgeous, aggressive profile arch that hugs the wrist. This watch is extremely comfortable. Now, during the unboxing video, I compared it to the SPB301 Willard which I thought had the same dial. And I'm a firm believer that a limited edition should have a unique color. The pattern can be the same, but at least a unique color. And that's why I brought up the Alpinist fiasco. Many people bought that mountain glacier because they thought, you know, they were getting something a little bit special. But I'm happy to say Seiko did not make the same mistake. This dial color is actually different. After I spent some time with them, I posted three pictures on Instagram with different lighting and you guys be the judge. I believe they are different. The 8KX definitely has more silver, more grayish tones than the whiter Willard. Okay, so I'm happy about that. Keeping the limited edition special like it should be. Speaking of limited edition, they are going to make 5,000 of them. I know that doesn't sound limited, but in the Seiko world, it's a little bit limited. <laughs> the number is large enough that I don't think they will be too difficult to get. The bezel reminds me of an upside down Reese's cup. That's the shape of it, and it does taper. Now let's have a listen. Typical smooth, buttery Seiko bezel with soft clicks. Now the insert is aluminum, my favorite, but this one has vinyl record-like grooves that gives the bezel more depth and personality, and I'm a big fan of it. The color reminds me of, in some lighting, the Oris tungsten metal inserts, and in other lighting, it sometimes looks black, but I do wonder if they should have went with a blue insert to match that beautiful blue second hand to give it a little bit more of a cohesive design. But then I guess it would look too much like the 301. Now let's quickly do the dimensions. I got 41 millimeters in diameter, a thickness of 12.3, that's the magical number. This is Seiko's thinnest Prospects automatic, and that really helps the wearability. We got drilled lugs for easy strap changes and a lug to lug of 46.9. The bracelet tapers from 20 millimeter down to 18. It looks like a five link. Thank God it's not a Rolex Oyster clone. There's some personality here and I love how thin it is. Not a fan of the clasp. There's only two micro adjusts. You know, on my Sarb, I needed that third micro adjust. I could never get comfortable. I think three is the minimum micro adjustments that you need. So that's a big negative, but it's a fully milled clasp and it does have a dive extension, which I'm not too keen on. The bracelet is sized via pins and collars. And as an added bonus, this limited edition does come with the legendary Sai Chu straps that are extremely comfortable and soft. They do raise the watch off the wrist about four to five millimeters. So just be wary of that. The dial has a gorgeous texture to it. It looks like a crumpled up piece of paper. <laughs> and you do get symmetry because the date is no longer at three o'clock. It's in between the four and the five o'clock indice, which no one really likes. Everyone always complains about it, but watches with dates sell way more than watches with no dates. So sorry, enthusiasts, you are not the priority but at least you're getting some symmetry. Me personally, for this watch, I like it at three o'clock like the original. The 333 is a pro specs professional diver with a single domed sapphire crystal, beautiful distortion, and a 6.5 millimeter screw down crown that works flawlessly to give the 333 200 meters of water resistance. All right, let's see how this watch performs. The movement 6R35, 21.6 VPH, 24 joules, hack hand wind automatic. 
and we have had some issues with the movement before. So let's see how this one does. Little bit of B error, 0.1. 276 amplitude, very nice. Now let's check out the rate, 13, 9, 9, and the fourth and final round, plus 9. Okay. We will now check out the positional variance. How will this watch actually perform when you wear it? These are the main two positions. Your watch will see beat error became perfect. Amplitude took a huge hit, 242. But look at that rate. One, two, one, and the fourth and final round, one. All right, I think we got a good one here. On the wrist, we might see about plus four, plus five. Let's check out the loom. We do have powerful Seiko Lumabrite thinly applied on pressed indices, and you get that gorgeous symmetry thanks to the much hated 430 date window. So there is a benefit, and you will be seeing that in the dark. Looks nice, doesn't it? The price of this limited edition is actually less than the special edition SPB301 we compared the dial with. So that's a good thing. However, the regular white 8KX, the SPB313, that one is 1100 USD. So for this line, the limited edition has a $200 premium. However, the side shoe strap is a bonus that doesn't come with the regular model. And that is an easy sell for $100. And I think brand new, it's 150 to 200 very difficult to get. Sometimes it takes eight months, even if you order through your AD. With all that in mind, are you guys a fan of this watch? Are you going to pick one up? Let me know down below. And guys, if you're still here, please remember to like the video. And if you're still on the hunt for your perfect Seiko diver, check out the two Seiko divers I recommend on the right of your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one.